Hello, welcome to another programming exam solution tutorial for this year's AQA Paper 1. Obviously we're looking at the Warships game and the last of my top five being saving the board. Uh, sorry this is a little bit delayed, I'd like to have done it earlier. Hopefully you've looked at the rest of the playlist and the idea is for this tutorial, which will actually be three tutorials, we'll be looking at saving the board as a string uh, or displaying it on the, the screen. And we'll look at a simple dump of the array, we'll look at run length encoding, which I think would be interesting anyway, and I figured uh, some kind of vector notation would be worth having a look at as well. If you don't know how to save in your programming language, you, I think you'll be in trouble. There's a chance that they're going to uh, ask you to save. There's obviously a load, uh, and it's part of the spec. However, in the past, AQA very rarely actually made you save anything because it's a real faff to prove that you've set, that it's actually saved and you've not created the file separately. <sighs> also, some centers do have trouble, especially with exam accounts, ensuring that um, the machines will save in the right place because they use virtual machines, etc. Make sure you can save, but be prepared for something that's similar to saving, but display it on the screen. If you practice with the capture the SARAM uh, code from last year, then uh, you know about the FEN notation. Uh, if you look at last year's paper for capture the SARAM and look at the final question, I think that's a real chance something like that will come up. So one of the problems is how do you actually evoke a save? Well. Doing it every move, I think that would be a, a really good way forward. Uh, the other one is if a certain number is entered. So let's say you enter 999 for column and then a sensible number for row, just an irrelevant one. And uh, that's what we're going to do for this particular uh, for this particular tutorial. We'll do the 999. Uh, as it happens, it's almost certainly going to be every single move because that's that's really easy, really easy to sort of. Uh, to get you to, to test the bits that you're struggling with. So what do you need to be able to do? Well, it has to be in the make player move procedure as far as I'm concerned, um, but I think we're going to create a new procedure which will be called from there. This new procedure will use stream writer, but of course you could use the file save method. Uh, the only reason we use stream writer today is because obviously we're using stream reader in the uh, program already. and just loop through the array, I'm just going to literally dump the array so it's in exactly the same format, sorry, almost exactly the same format as the training file. Now, I'm just going to carry on at the end of this as if nothing's happened because going back to the menu is a real faff and I'm certainly not going to do loading because that of course is what the training game load game does. So you could just have it that you pass a, a new file name to that, so we don't need to, to look at that. Right, let's look at the code. Uh, I've got make player move here ready, and uh, we need to, if we're going to use the 999 uh, to evoke it, we need to uh, create a new procedure. Uh, we could actually do it in the make player move, of course, but let's create a new procedure, uh, and we're going to pass board to it. Uh, we'll create another couple of um, create another couple of variables, row column. And in actual fact, you may have noticed load game just sort of uh, flash up there for a second. I'm trying to use exactly the same uh, exactly the same uh, what's the word I'm after structure as the load game. In fact, to be honest with you, you could probably copy and paste load game and make about three changes. So Obviously, rather than using uh, file reader, sorry, stream reader, we're going to use stream writer. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you need to look that up. We now create the very familiar nested for loops. And what we're going to do is have a dot write where we're going to write that particular board element, particular array element, the array board, to the file. And 
at the end of every set of nine columns, we're going to add a right line. So we are actually going to have it stored in the file in the same format as we would see it in the uh, see it on the screen, which seems to make sense. All right, well, I suppose we need to call that now. So what I've done is said uh, if column equals 999, then I'm going to put the call there. And everything, if it's not that, then everything else happens as usual. And you need to be careful this happens after get row column. After you've created it, have a step through the code and you'll, you'll see why we've done it like that. Right, let's add the call. And that is everything. So let's quickly test it. And we'll start a new game. Does it really matter if we do a training game or not? So we'll we'll do a uh, one one just so we can see that's still working. And we'll work in a nine nine nine. This has got to be sensible, otherwise it will crash still. And it says game saved. And if we go to just so you can see, that's the right place. We've got the training game there, which looks like that. Oops, slightly off the screen. And if I go to the save file, you can see we've got that, but we've also got the miss that I put in at 1 1. As always, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to add comments at the end. Thank you very much.